Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Hey, thank you for joining me today. Before we get started on today's topic, I want to share something that is extremely rare for me to talk about. Some of you may not be aware that Dave and I provide support and resources to grieving parents full time through Grieving Parents Sharing Hope, GPS Hope. We don't have jobs. You are our passion to walk with grieving parents through the suffocating darkness of child loss, navigating them to a place of hope and light and purpose again. The reason I'm sharing this with you today is because this podcast is listener supported. All the resources and support provided by GPS Hope are also based on financial donations as a 501c3 charitable organization. What comes in financially by the end of the year helps us to determine what we can do as a ministry the following year. So if GPS Hope has been a lifeline to you as a bereaved parent, Would you consider becoming a grieving parent sharing hope and bless this ministry with a financial gift so that we can continue to provide hope and support and resources to you and other parents who don't even know they will be needing us yet next year? You can do this by going to gpshope.org slash support. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to today's topic of five gifts you can give yourself while grieving during the holidays. All I really remember is a blur of deep, suffocating pain the first holiday season after our daughter Becca died, which was in October. I really don't remember much those first maybe three years or so. I know we celebrated because I have pictures. I did not have anyone to help me through this difficult time of year, so that is what I want to do for you. As I've continued on this journey, I have discovered there are things you can do to help ease the pain and bring in a glimmer of light here and there into your place of darkness those first few years. I like to think of them as gifts you can give to yourself. The first one is to change one tradition. If there is one that is particularly painful, change it to something that makes you feel a little less torn. For example, instead of maybe the painful memory of shopping for the perfect fresh Christmas tree, maybe buy an artificial one so that that isn't something that's a really difficult trigger for you. The second one, Be up front and let close family and friends know this is still painful for you. You can do this by giving them something to read, written by someone else on this journey to explain why this is normal and what will help and what will hurt those of us who are in deep grief missing our children. I want to read something to you that Ann Moss Rogers wrote. She's been on the podcast with me before as a guest. Her son, Charles, died by suicide, and she titled this, What Grieving Parents Want You to Know. You are still important to us. We still want to be asked, invited, and included. We might not go, and then again we may. We still want to talk about our child who died, days, months, and even years later. Our greatest fear is that our child will be forgotten. We hope you will listen and be there for us, asking us on holidays how we might be coping and understanding that certain times of year might still be a struggle even decades later. We may still want to visit the grave or have some kind of shrine. It might make you uncomfortable and you may have decided that we should have moved past all this, but we never move past it We just learn to live with it. It's not your job to push us from sad to happy. You can't fix it, but your ears and empathy help. Now, we have turned this into a PDF. If you like what I just read from Ann Moss, you can print it out and give it to someone. 
if that would help you at all, you know, help you to help them understand a little bit that this is very typical and normal for us to be struggling during the holidays. If you want to request this as a PDF, just go to gpshope.org slash AMR. That stands for Ann Moss Rogers, gpshope.org slash AMR. And we'll send you the PDF. It's just a, you know, we made it real nice for you. And you can print that out and give that to anyone you want to. So the third gift is while you're at it, ask everyone to come to the family event prepared with a special memory of your child to share. Now, just a note, funny is good as laughter brings a measure of healing. Remind your family that the holiday gatherings are a precious time to spend with each other and to talk about and share memories about those who couldn't make it. Just Maybe see death as putting your child in the category of someone who couldn't make it. You may find that you hear stories you never knew. And this may even give you something to look forward to instead of dreading being with others if you know that everybody's going to be sharing stories about your child and others who can't be there. The fourth one, buy a special notebook and write to your child or your loved one over the holidays. Describe the holiday scenes to him or her. Share with them events that you attended and let them know how much you miss them. There probably will be a lot of tears, but tears are cleansing. And through the pain, it will probably also bring a measure of healing. It may not feel like it at the time, but I do believe it will help. And the fifth one is do that one thing you enjoy doing with your child with a close friend or family member who will share the memories with you. Now, obviously, if this you just can't do it, you can't do it. But this is just a suggestion and a gift that you can give yourself. For instance, have someone over to help bake and decorate Christmas cookies who will allow you to go through all the emotions, from tears to laughter, as you go through the motions of the activity and remember your child. There is one last gift I want to share with you, which I personally believe could be the most important. Isolation is paralyzing. I understand our need to be alone. I truly do. We need lots and lots of time alone to work through the painful, suffocating darkness and to start figuring out who we are now without our child, including deciding if we even want to know. But we also need people. We need people who will hold us up while allowing us to grieve deeply. Some of you may have heard me say this before, but it took me over two years to connect with other grieving parents. I did not want to be around a group of people who were a mess like me. But when I finally made myself go to a gathering of grieving moms, I discovered the opposite, how healing it was to be around a group of people who were a mess just like me. They understood. They got it. I didn't have to explain myself or excuse myself for any of the emotions I was feeling or reacting to. It was wonderful. We need people who will help us move forward in a way that's not pushy, but supportive. Now, this may be the same group or a totally different group of people. It can also change over the years. Several years ago, I connected with someone who had a conference that brought 200 kindred spirits who have a personal message to share and are moving forward and taking that message to those in the world who need it through being an author. Now, those few days boosted the desire to allow God's fire of purpose to burn brightly in me once again. Yes, it was a completely different purpose than it was a few years ago before Becca died of traveling to the nations for children's ministries and training, but it was a flame that was fanned to new proportions. And it made me feel like there was a, a blazing fire of determination in me to not let Becca's death be wasted, to reach as many bereaved parents as possible with the message of hope, helping each bereaver find their personal path to a fulfilled life of purpose beyond their pain. 
often our deepest pain becomes our greatest purpose. And that's definitely been the case for me. And if you allow it, it can be the same for you. How do I know? Because of those I've rubbed shoulders with, both at that conference and other places over the years who have lost children, and they are now blazing a path for others in a specific area of life that was deeply affected by their loss of their child. Each one has chosen not to become isolated in their pain, but to take the risk to reach out and help others behind them on the same journey, or to reach out and help those who are in a place they found themselves in with their child. Maybe it was, um, I think of, of a friend we've had on here before, that his daughter drowned, and so he has spent years helping with this, this kind of a thing, with the drowning and how to keep that from happening. These are people that choose to find others to connect with who will impart into them what is needed to make their purpose as effective as possible. It's like a chain reaction. And I said that may change over the years. So right now, I'm connecting with a group of people who are on a health journey and keeping me motivated to be at a healthy weight by changing my relationship with food and incorporating healthy habits into my life that go beyond just food and exercise. And I'm so excited about what I've discovered that I've become a health coach to also walk with perivers on their physical journey when they are ready to take their health back. So... How about you? Where are you on this grief journey of pain to purpose? I know many of you are probably thinking that may have happened to some people, but I don't ever see it happening to me. I'm going to recommend that you start with the list of the five gifts that I gave you that you can give to yourself. Pick only one or do them all. Wherever you are in this journey is okay. Even if you can't do anything this year, but survive, I understand, I get it. Only you know what is right and what will work with you. But make sure you are connected to those who are on this path ahead of you. I, Like I said, I think this is the best gift you can give yourself. Someone who can walk with you with support and encouragement It'll make such a huge difference, especially during the dreaded holiday season. And if you're ready, ask God to connect you with a group who will help you find a purpose from the pain of the death of your child. If you aren't quite ready for that step, I do pray that I have convinced you that at some point it will be important to find and grab hold of a group of people who will help you move forward by discovering and walking in your unique purpose with your gifts and your talents. I know at the beginning we are immersed in grief and all we can do is try to survive minute by minute, but you will get to a point where you start to choose if you are going to stay a victim of what has happened. And I encourage you, when that happens, don't choose to stay on a path that keeps you in total darkness and pain and fear. Make a choice to take at least one step toward light and hope and maybe even putting a fire in your soul once again. It can take a while to get to the point of even wanting it, even believing that it can happen. And it will probably be something you have to fight for. And I know at the beginning, it's like, I can't fight for anything. I'm just trying to breathe. But when those two things come together, a desire to have it and a willingness to stay in the battle to win the war, you will find yourself standing on a different path, the path of learning how to live a fulfilled life with meaning and purpose beyond the death of your child. That's not in spite of their death, but because of his or her life. You can do it because I did it and I believe in you. Until that happens, start with the little bit you can do by giving yourself a needed gift while grieving during the holidays. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for each one listening. Lord, we so desperately need you right now during this holiday season. It's so hard. We miss our children so much during the Christmas season. 
Lord, I pray that you would give us peace within the pain. And Lord, that you would somehow open our eyes to see that there is so much more to this Christmas season. Lord, that even though we may have lost our desire to celebrate, we have not lost the reason to celebrate this Christmas season. And that is that you, Jesus, came as a baby and you came for the purpose of dying so that you could reconcile and redeem each one of us to yourself so that when we leave this world, we will be with you and with our children and those that we love forever. We thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for that gift. And Lord, I pray that each one listening will find a way to give themselves a gift during this Christmas season that will just bring a measure of healing to them. I lift each one up to you. Be what they need in this moment and throughout the end of this year. And I pray these things in your precious and wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. This episode has been about giving yourself a gift. And one of those gifts is to hang out with others who get it and are ahead of you on this journey to be able to encourage you and give you hope just by seeing where they are down this same road. Now, may I suggest a fantastic gift is to send yourself on a cruise with Dave and I and other perivers. Now, I know a grief cruise may sound like an oxymoron, an opposite. How can you do a cruise, a grief? They just don't mix. But believe me, they do. It can bring a huge needed measure of healing in so many ways. The grief cruise is for anyone with a deep loss, with times where we'll all be together, like the opening and closing sessions and the memorial walk around the deck. But we will also have time set aside just for those who have lost a child. The grief seminar and the events are all on the days we're at sea, so you won't miss anything at the Ports of Call. We set sail from Port Canaveral on October 1st for a seven-night Eastern Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. To find out more, including being able to watch a video of last year's cruise, which we were on a year ago right now, if you're listening to this when, episode when it comes out, go to gpshope.org slash cruise. On that webpage, there will be a button you can click to fill out a short form with some information to have Lynn Finley give you a call for more specific information on cabins and such, to answer any questions you may have, and to set up a payment plan if you're ready to book your room. I hope you at least check it out. This is a wonderful opportunity, and I would hate for you to hear about how great it was and wish you had been with us. Give yourself the gift of checking it out and hopefully come along with us. That's gpshope.org slash cruise. So we have talked about gifts you can give yourself, but what about a gift you can give your child? For only a $50 donation to GPS Hope, you can dedicate a podcast episode to your child. We will let the listeners know, and they can get to know your son or daughter when I read something that you have written about him or her at the beginning of the episode that you sponsor. For a $100 donation, we would love to add your child's name in a heart decal on the Hope Mobile to travel the nation with us. Now, I mentioned at the beginning how Dave and I do not have jobs to support us, but that we are full-time missionaries to bereaved parents. So both of these are a win-win for you and for us. To do either of these, to sponsor a podcast episode in honor of your child or to have him or her put in a heart decal to travel the nation with us, just go to gpshope.org and go to the Donate tab and click on the one that you're interested in doing. If you would like to just support GPS Hope as a way of saying thank you for the resources and support we have given you and to help us continue, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode, go to gpshope.org slash support. Let's go into our birthday segment. And we only have one birthday this week. Angie Matta was born on December 4th and is forever 36. And we do celebrate with Angie's family the day she came into this world. We know it will always be a special and an important day. If you would like to have 
your child's birthday announced the week of his or her birthday, just go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. There's just a little information we need. Submit that form, including the pronunciation, if the name is known to be mispronounced, because I do want to make sure I say their name correctly. Submit that information, and we will announce your child's birthday the week of his or her birthday, and Dave will also send you an email to remind you to listen that week. As we wrap this up, let me ask you, what is at least one gift you are going to give yourself this Christmas season? You might want to listen to this episode again, I know it was short, and write a note to yourself on your calendar when you will implement one of the five things I shared. Don't just think, oh, maybe I'll do that one, but actually make a plan when and how you're going to do it. And maybe it's joining me the next couple of Sunday nights live at 8.30 Central Time on the GPS Hope YouTube channel as I light the next two candles on the Advent wreath and do a reading that is specifically for us as bereaved parents. Maybe it's giving yourself the gift of health. If you want to know more about what I'm doing and possibly connect with me to be your health coach, just go to gpshope.org slash health. Maybe you're going to give yourself the gift of saying no to a bunch of extra celebrations and staying home to relax, cry, laugh, sleep, whatever it is you need to do. I would love for you to share with me what gift you will give yourself this season by sharing in the comments under the episode on the GPS Hope website, and I'll provide a link for that if you're listening on an app on your phone. The next couple of weeks here on the podcast, we are not going to be talking about the holidays. I think we've done enough of that, and I hope you join me because we're going to be talking about getting signs from our kids. Is it demonic? Does that really happen? So join me the next couple of weeks. As you navigate this Christmas season, remember the reason is to celebrate that Jesus came as a baby, to die as a sacrifice, to make a way for us to be with our children again forever. And that is worth celebrating. So hold on. Pain eases, there is hope.